Got some past exam questions here for the Year 12 Redux topic. So if you want to have a go, the link to the questions is in the description. So download the questions, have a go, and then watch the video for the answers. Okay, so a couple of uh, multiple choice questions to start off with. What's the formula of chromium 3 sulfate? So we need to know our ion. So sulfate ion is, is the SO4 to minus ion. Chromium with that Roman 3 means that it's the Cr3 plus ion. So basically what ratio of ions will give us no overall charge? And it's 2 Cr3 pluses to 3 SO4 2 minuses. In other words, get the charge up to 6 on both sides. So it's C. Question 2. Which equation represents a redox reaction? So we're looking for an oxidation process and a reduction process in the reaction. The best way to tackle something like this is just go for oxidation numbers. So if we start with A, magnesium has an oxidation number of 0, but in the compound MgCl2 it's plus 2. So that's an oxidation process. So is there a reduction process? Well, hydrogen starts out at plus 1 and it goes to 0 in hydrogen, the element. So there you've got oxidation and reduction in the same reaction. So the answer was A. Okay, so question three now. So I've written down the rule for oxygen. So oxygen's rule is that it's negative two oxidation number unless fluorine's present, in which case it would be plus two. Or if it's a peroxide, so like hydrogen peroxide, something like that, it's negative one. Well, we've got neither of those in this case, so oxygen will be negative two. So in the first one, we've got three oxygens so minus 2, minus 2, minus 2. So each nitrogen is going to be plus 3. So plus 3 for that one. Um, NO, so we've got a single O, so that's minus 2. So that's got to be plus 2. And in the third one, we've got two negative 2s for those two oxygens. So that's going to have to be plus 4. So that's actually going to help us with part two. So if I just write down these oxidation numbers above the relevant ends, so we've got plus three, we've got plus two, and plus four. So you can see we've got a decrease in oxidation number there, so that's a reduction process, but we've got an increase in oxidation number there, so that's an oxidation process. So what do we call that type of reaction? Disproportionation. Okay, so number four now, see I've highlighted in terms of the numbers of electrons transferred, that's what we've got to bring into our answer. The redox process is taking place in the reaction. So is it oxidation, is it reduction, and how many electrons are involved? So the way I'm going to tackle this, we'll start with magnesium. Zero is the element, plus two in the compound. So the magnesium's been oxidized, its oxidation number's gone up. In terms of electrons, what it's done is it's lost two electrons. So moving on to the reduction process, if we look at the copper, so copper starts out as plus two in that compound because that sulfate ion has a negative two charge, so the copper must be plus two and it's going to the element where it has the oxidation number of zero. So that's a reduction process because its uh, oxidation number has decreased. In terms of electrons, it's gained two electrons. So question five starts out by testing our knowledge of basic acid reactions. So we've got an acid reacting with a metal to form a salt and the other product is hydrogen. Okay, so next part. So cerium Roman three means Ce3 plus sulfate we should know is SO4 two minus. And so therefore we need two Ce3 pluses and three SO4 two minuses to get those charges equal and opposite. So it's Ce2 SO4 three times. So in the reaction, the cerium metal has turned into the cerium three plus ion. So in terms of oxidation numbers, it's gone from zero to plus three. How do you do that? You need to lose three electrons and so it's lost three electrons, it's therefore been oxidized. The final part of the question is just testing our knowledge of the definition for salt. So we're told the salt is cerium-3 sulfate. It's been formed from sulfuric acid. So basically what happened is the H plus ion of the sulfuric acid 
has been replaced by that metal ion, that CE3 plus ion. Okay, so next question, we've got to use oxidation numbers to show what's being oxidised and what's being reduced. So obviously oxidation is where there's an increase in oxidation number, reduction is where there's a decrease. So if we just pick manganese first of all, so each oxygen's negative 2, so that needs to be plus 4. Let's look at manganese in the product. Well, each chlorine in that is negative 1, so the manganese must only be plus 2 now. So that's a decrease in oxidation number, so that's your reduction process. So you need to make sure that, as well as saying what's been reduced, you need to talk about the oxidation number changes. So we can see I've said the oxidation number decreases from plus 4 to plus 2. So in terms of the oxidation process, we're looking for an increase in oxidation number. So, well, it's not the hydrogen because you've got 4 plus 1s in HCl and you've effectively got 4 plus 1s in 2 moles of H2O. So there's been no change to the hydrogen. The chlorine starts out as negative 1 there. It's still negative 1 here, but in the element, it's 0. So there's the change. It's increased from minus 1 to 0, and so therefore chlorine is oxidised. Question 7 now, so we've got to use oxidation numbers to explain why it's a disproportionation reaction. Quick reminder, disproportionation is a redox reaction where the same element is oxidised and reduced. So if we look at this phosphorus, it starts out at 0. In pH 3, well the hydrogens are plus 1 each, so P is negative 3. So that's a reduction process, because the oxidation number has gone down. So if we now look at P in this compound here, well, we've got some rules to follow from the oxidation number rules. So sodium's group 1, group 1 in a compound's plus 1. Hydrogen's, they're plus 1 as well, but there's two of them. Oxygen, minus 2 each. So what does the P need to be to maintain the um, neutral aspect of this compound? It needs to be plus 1. So you'd end up with 4 plus 1's with the 2 minus 2's. So you can see that phosphorus is reduced there, but it's oxidised there. So those three marks, we're obviously getting the definition in. Um, phosphorus is oxidised and reduced. Identifying the oxidation process, so we're saying it's going from 0 to plus 1. Remember, it's really important to put the change of oxidation number in. And obviously, that's reflected in this product here. And then the reduction process, 0 to minus 3, and that's observed in that um, product there. Question 8, so we're told that the systematic name for NaClO is sodium chlorate 1. That's because the chlorine is in its plus 1 oxidation state. Just explain that. Negative 2 for the oxygen, plus 1 for the sodium, so that's got to be plus 1, hence that 1 there. Um, so what is the systematic name for NaClO3? A common wrong answer there would be sodium chlorate 3 because students can see there's a 3 there whereas there was a 1 there, so it might make that sort of link. But it's really down to the oxidation number of the chlorine. So if we just go through the motions, minus 2, but there's 3 of them, plus 1 for that sodium. So the chlorine actually needs to be plus 5 to maintain uh, the neutral aspect of this compound. So it's called sodium chlorate 5, but we've got to use the Roman 5. Okay, so question 9 now. We've been given the formula of the nitrate 5 ion, and we've got to work out the formula of the sulfate 4 ion, IV, and the chlorate 3 ion. So the way I normally explain this is sulfate means that there's sulfur and oxygen present. It needs to have a charge, an ionic charge of 2 minus, we're told that in the table. And the IV means the sulphur needs to be plus 4. So we basically need the oxygen to have a combined charge of 6 minus, and that will leave over the charge that we want for the ion. So if each oxygen is minus 2, we need 3 of them. So it's SO3, 2 minus. So for chlorate 3, we've got Cl and O. It needs to have a 1 minus charge. We need the chlorine to be plus 3. 
So we need the oxygen to have a total oxidation number of minus 4 to leave over the 1 minus charge. Each oxygen's got to be minus 2, so we need two of them. So it's ClO2 minus. Write the formula for aluminium nitrate 5. So we've got aluminium is a 3 plus ion. Nitrate 5, we're told in the table, is NO3 minus. So we need three nitrate 5 ions for every aluminium 3 plus. So it's Al, NO3 in brackets, three times. Final question. It's not really testing our knowledge of redox reactions um, and oxidation number. It's testing our knowledge of different reaction types. So key bits of information here. Well, the teachers heated the potassium chloride 5. Let's look at what's happening to it. It starts out like this and it's going to two substances. So it's broken down. So what do we call that? Thermal decomposition.